This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favourite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. Okay, so this week I heard Mike Marino's new album, uh, Standards from Films, right? Mike Marino, incredible jazz guitar player. If you're into kind of jazz or wanting to get into jazz in any sense, I think he's one of these modern guitar players who's really incredible. One of the things that Mike's, I think, been clearly quite obsessed with for a while is actually going back and listening to the original source material. I think you can find interviews of him talking about this sort of thing. And... Um, it's something that I've found for myself personally makes me feel like I'm maybe getting a little bit deeper into this jazz stuff than if I just play from the real book or anything like that, which I used to do earlier on. Now, what you find is that actually the real book is just someone's interpretation often of like one specific performance, which may not even be that close to the original. You know, people say don't necessarily always rely on the real book. So if you listen back to 
It actually comes from a 1942 film, I think, Iceland, originally played in B major, which of course people oftentimes play in E flat now, but you can find a Nat King Cole version in D flat. You can find a Chet Baker version in F. Basically, I think Mike plays it in D major. You can play it in whatever key you like, but what I wanted to show you, um, I guess, was how I might play it in B, which I did in the introduction, and talk through the changes as I see them, and they differ slightly from the real book, and that's fine. Basically, it just enables us to um, make interpretations. Uh, so if you're interested in how I play it, I'm gonna show you how to play it now. Patreon will be the place to get back in tracks, as well as, um, you know, the actual tab for this, which I'll put up as well. But yeah, there will never be another you. Really nice ballad. I think Chet Baker would have been the first version I've heard properly. Now, so in the film, we're playing it in B, and it's very cold today, but I'll try to play it. This bit here in particular is quite different. So I'll put that together in terms of um, how I would play it, but I thought I might as well show you how to play it in the key that most oftentimes people will play it. So typically people might play it in E flat, maybe E flat is a bit of a friendlier key for horn players and that sort of stuff. So I might play it here. So we'd start with our melody on this eighth fret here on the D string, and then maybe six, five, five, up to a major seven. And then we're gonna fall down to a D, D minor. Now, interestingly, a lot of places call it like a D minor seven flat five, Actually, the source material sort of plays that a bit more ambiguously. So you can treat that like a straightforward 2-5 in C major. And then resolve to your C minor. So our G, then our C minor. And then we get like a, a, a diminished chord here. And what's written in the kind of real book is a two five in E flat major. They actually uh, originally goes up to the four instead of the two. So we get to the D flat and then resolve to the E flat seven. So I might play that. So ninth fret, 10th fret, ninth fret, eighth, up to an E flat sus, then up to our A flat. So a straightforward 11, 13, 12 and 11. Then down to a ninth fret, nine, 10, eight. And this is coming from our kind of G altered or A flat melodic minor. It's a D flat seven sharp 11. Then back up to our uh, 
uh, C minor, then up to an F major. So I just play that eighth fret and turns to an F minor to a two five. So from an F minor to a B flat. And then we repeat the same thing. That's quite a nice way to, to finish that one. So like an A minor there works quite nicely. So 12th fret, 12th fret, 12th fret, 10th, or, or D7 works quite nicely as well. Kind of a, um, or an F dominant works as well. And then we fall to an E flat in first inversion. So 10, 10, 11. And then to diminish. So 9, 10, 8. And then 10 to 8. Kind of tricky. Then to an E flat 7. And then to uh, A flat minor. So. So E flat seven, so 11, eight, 11, and then an A flat minor. So A flat, ninth fret, 11th fret, 11th fret. Then to a two, five, F minor, B flat to E flat. So hopefully that helps you, um, I think it's a jazz tune which makes a ton of sense to, to figure out how to play. Once you've figured out how to play the head of this, uh, that would be my step one because I think if you can feel like you can actually play the melody and you've got it kind of playing in the back of your head by learning this sort of, sort of chord melody, I think it's then much easier to improvise over it because you've kind of got this record playing in the back of your head about how this tune could or should go so give that a try i'll catch you in another video soon the chord melody for this will go up on patreon i hope one or two of you like the tune there will never be another you um i really like it i'll catch you again